I'm talking about systemic racism. And most times... Has it gotten worse since 1960? Yes, actual... Yes, actually... Systemic racism has gotten worse since Jim Crow. Yes, so you want me to give you a stat? Black home ownership today is less than it was pre-Fair Housing Act of 1968. But let me also talk about the fact that... being the welfare let me, state. Let me, let, me also, sure. let me also tell you this. A lot of times when we talk about racism, we only talk about the fact when somebody calls you but very rarely do we talk about the systems of injustice and oppression we have in this country. Hey there, my name is Devory Darkins. Welcome back to my channel, Mindset Politics. And in this video today, I've been wanting to truly discuss this particular topic for quite a bit, uh, especially when it comes to the black community and this constant push or this belief that they're trying to cram down our throats. And they have been very successful, actually, this whole systematic racism conversation. And so Bakari Sellers goes on to Bill Maher and he gets into this debate with Ben Shapiro and it just shows you how the math just doesn't add up. So before we go any further, you already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Play the video. Bakari, but, is but, your life as a black man better or worse than it would have been if you had been born in 1920 in the United States? Well, if you had, all you have to do is ask my father who literally was shot in the Orangeburg Massacre, right? Who helped found SNCC, who marched with Marion Barry and Stokely Carmichael and Martin Luther King, and the list goes on and on and on. And he will tell you today that he feels like this country's at 1954. He feels, he feels, doesn't mean it is. And so if you wanna talk about somebody- but that doesn't who, mean it is. Well, you said he feels that way. That's ridiculous. That it is, is. No, 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 but, but, so I, think just, the, I think the ridiculous notion is for either one of you all to have the audacity to believe that you understand. What oh, I already know what it is. He's going to go to the, you guys don't know because you ain't black. I already know it. The experience has <laughs> to be. I, I, I have to object to that. That, 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 that. But you just said I, cannot, notion, I cannot talk about it because I am not part of a group. I am a sentient human being. You're right. There's two ways you cannot understand something. One is to be too far from it. We're too far from it. We can't see like you can. One is to be too close to something. And then sometimes you can't see it accurately either. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too uh, close to something. I am that. I know. So, but, but when that, I, that, that's even worse. <laughs> I'm not too close, close to it. I am that, right? And before we go any further, this whole conversation about systematic racism, he didn't even answer the question. So as a black person, do you think your life is better today than it would have been if you were born in 1920? Now, one could argue if you were objectively clear on this and really looked at the facts and the history, there are some aspects of black people as a community where we could say, hey, back in 1950s, 40s, 30s, even 60s, that there were certain aspects of our lives at that time that are better than it was today. One of those aspects, without a doubt, is definitely the nuclear family. We were much together as a community. Now, I do believe, obviously, black people were oppressed at one point in time, for sure, we were. And so that definitely brought us together, right? Because what other choice did we have? We had each other. So in that respect, I would say, yeah, we've definitely lost that over the the you know time, over, over the decades, right? Through many generations, we've lost that continuity. And there have been other uh, cultures that have surpassed us. Look at people who come from India. Look at people who are Jewish, right? Look at people who are Italian right? They stick with each other, right? They grow up together. They do things as a family. That's not the black culture. The black culture is, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to do this on my own. I don't need a black man. I don't need your help, Mr. White man. I'm going to do it on me, right? That has been the mindset and it comes from fear, scarcity, and lack. That's been passed down for many, many generations, even in the face of of successful black people in America, and a lot of them who are successful, who are rich, are still speaking that way. It just shows you the disconnect that, that is occurring. And I'm with Bill Maher on this. I don't agree with everything he says, but I definitely agree with him on this, is that sometimes you're so close to the problem, you don't even see it for what it really is, that you are the problem. Your mindset and how you're approaching the problem is the problem, not the problem itself. Right. And so that's what's really going on here. What I am saying, though, is for you to sit for you to discount my father's experience and say 
I'm but, not discounting but, it. And to say it was silly. I'm not, no, no, well, no, he was shot. No, no, were shit. you shot? No, but he's still alive. Like okay. he's right here. Like right. But, but, but the, the but, idea but, that but, if, but, if I were to say to you as a Jew that the experience of Jews in the United States today is worse than the experience of Jews in Europe in 1939, I would not be stating accurately. Correct. It's not true. That's and right. it's also not true mm. to say that the experience of black people in America in 2024 is worse on a general level I than am, the experience of black men in 1954 in Alabama. That's just I mean, crazy. There is, but I mean, I think, I, I but, there think there are but, but I don't want to let go of that belief, because if I let go of that belief, then I'm not black, right? And, and I'm, not, I'm not doing or thinking the way that my grandparents thought. And you know what's funny is a lot of the grandparents uh, today, they actually don't believe that racism is truly a problem today. They believe that the woke mindset is a problem today. Cell phones are the problem today because they're feeding people the wrong perception of what's really going on. You see, it's almost a fabrication of an issue that truly does not exist. Now, are there people in this world that are racist? Absolutely. And if you were really objective about the actual definition of racism, you could find racism within your own culture. You can. There are black people who are racist against other black people, right? There's a whole thing that happens within the black culture. Oh, you're light skinned, so you're less than us. Oh, you're whitewashed, so you're less than us. That's racism. If you think your skin color or your culture is superior to mine, that's racism. That's exactly what it is. So it, 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 it's funny that the black culture has become the very thing that they hate or despise or fear. That's the crazy part about it. He's so insecure about this. He can't even logically respond to these questions. He can't even truly be objective and say, hey, you know what? You are right. My life is better. You're on a talk show host with two Jewish people being watched live, uh, right? National stage, okay? You think you would have been able to do that in 1954? You think you'd be able to walk down the street and not be bothered in 1954? I mean, this is it's just, it's so clear and so obvious. It's almost as if common sense has went into the trash. That's exactly what has happened. I also think that that's decently intellectually honest, dishonest. And that, that's my problem with it. I, I, think that's, I think that's genuinely intellectually dishonest. Because when we go through, when we go through the litany of, of not just, imagine, so for example, one of, the, one of my major uh -huh. political issues is African-American female mortality, right? If you want to talk about structural racism. Did you know, I'm sure you do, but black women are three to four times more likely to die during childbirth than white women. That's also true in Europe, by the way. But, but we're talking about the United States of America. I know, but we're the problem is you have to have a control. But we do have a control. Well, no, and we're statistical talking about, control. And so tell me why that is. Okay, the answer is because black people in the United States have a, lar, a, a lower household income, median household income, which means they but typically not, go that's, to but that, hospitals. I would call bullshit it, because it actually crosses across socioeconomic lines. So you can be my wife who almost died during childbirth. You can be Serena Williams who almost died. Well, it's not even a black thing. It's actually an American thing. America has the highest um, mortality rate for newborns, okay? It's our medical system that is the problem. Now, is that systematic racism? I don't think so. I think that is more uh, systematic corruption because everything is based on money, right? So that's not that's not a, a race thing. That's more of a, there's something wrong with the medical system. And furthermore, he wants to bring up childbirth and black women uh, having the highest mortality rate. What about that black women have the highest abortion rate? That's within their control. They don't have to have a kid. They don't have to open their legs, but they do. But see, that right there is what no one ever wants to say because that means what? We have to take responsibility for our own actions. And when we're spending more time blaming the system, we can't take responsibility for what we are doing. We, we just can't. Doing and, and, so what's your answer? Uh, what is, I, because actually... White doctors are racist? No, but there actually is implicit bias in our healthcare delivery system. And, people, and, and there have been medical studies that show that people... Uh, respond to the pain of black women differently than they respond to the pain of white women. Yeah, I believe that, that literally is a fact. And so I, I am trying to help both of you all understand that sometimes there are systems in place that, that just treat that, people. That, that, yeah, let's say that is. Let's say that is true. Again, um, how much of that actually happens, though? Like, what is, show me the receipts. What is your, what is your studies? Show me where it shows that.
but then tell me why that's happening exactly. What processes are in place that causes that to happen exactly? Because there's a lot of people in the nursing field that are African American. So are you saying that black nurses treat other black people that way too? Right? So, I mean, it's one of those things where if something happens 1% of the time, these race hustlers, you know what they do? They make it sound like it happens 99% of the time. And that's the problem in this country is so many people are caught up in their feelings and not actually caught up in facts and what they truly want to do and be and be a great example for the next generation. Um, no, they're, they're, they're stuck in the past. They're, they're acting as if this is 1960 again. We need to march on the Capitol. We need to we need to call out racism everywhere we see it, even though we don't even know what it actually looks like, because that's what has happened over time is they are so blinded by what racism actually is. They call everything racism. It's all pretty much watered down at this point. And this is why mindset is just so important. You either have a mindset that is based on abundance, love, faith, confidence, security, or you have a mindset that is based on fear, scarcity, lack, insecurity, right? That's literally what it is. There is no in between that either you're based on that or that. And what dictates that usually is your own upbringing. If all you did when you grew up as a kid you were told, hey, because you're black, you're less than that white person over there. And they may not say that directly, but they that's the conclusion because kids don't have life in, life experience. So when when the parents are saying, oh, well, you know, they, they're going to lo look at you different because you're black or, oh, you need to be careful because if the cops see you, they might do this. You're planting a limiting belief, a fear in the minds of of black children who one day will grow up as adults and hold that belief even though that's not the truth and so what happens they put themselves in positions where that's how they see it so even if they ran the red light even if they failed to comply with the police they still believe that it's not their fault that it's the system's fault and here's the thing I'll even meet you halfway, just like Denzel Washington did. Even if the system is racist, why do you have your kids out there like that? Why are you putting yourselves in position compromised like that? Why are you breaking the law? Why not focus on your purpose and why God put you on this planet to begin with? To serve others, to go out there and use your gifts and talents, not from a place of fear, scarcity, and lack and insecurity, but from a place of abundance and faith and confidence. That's my mindset on this. What's yours? What do you think about this interview? This guy, Bakari Sellers, trying to sell systematic racism uh, to us in this clip. Uh, I just find it very ironic. I find it just embarrassing, quite frankly. I imagine he's a very smart dude, just not very smart in this regard. Um, so answer this and more in the comment section below. Thank you so much for checking out this video today, and I'll see you in the next one.